Among the top space agencies closely monitoring SpaceX's journey, NASA stands out as the largest aerospace organization in the United States. As Starship successfully completed its fifth flight, NASA was once again the first to congratulate SpaceX on this impressive achievement. So what did NASA have to say about this historic event? And is NASA becoming increasingly dependent on SpaceX? Let's dive into these questions in today's video. As with previous launches, right after Starship's successful booster catch, Bill Nelson quickly sent his congratulations to the entire SpaceX team. Congratulations to SpaceX on the successful booster catch and the fifth test flight of Starship. As we prepare to return to the moon through the Artemis program, these tests will pave the way for the next bold missions, including exploring the lunar south pole and the journey to Mars. This congratulatory message is not just recognition, it's a source of motivation for the space community, reflecting SpaceX's achievements and aspirations to conquer the cosmos. Elon Musk responded, Thank you, sir. We are honored to serve NASA and bring humanity back to the moon. The relationship between SpaceX and NASA is growing increasingly tight-knit. While the reasons behind the FAA's early approval for launch licenses remain unclear, NASA's support could be a key factor. It's evident that NASA, a government agency, is heavily reliant on SpaceX. Although they claim to want more options, SpaceX remains a standout company, making it hard to find a worthy competitor. A prime example is the Commercial Crew Program, where Boeing's Starliner was expected to be NASA's second option. However, not everyone can innovate like SpaceX, and Boeing's internal issues have forced Starliner to depend on SpaceX's Dragon to rescue astronauts stranded at the ISS. Another area highlighting this dependency is the Starship lander for the Artemis mission, a national project with a $4 billion investment from NASA. They hope Starship will land astronauts back on the lunar surface, focusing on the rugged and challenging terrain of the lunar south pole. The low angle lighting and the requirement for precise landings in designated areas have led NASA to select 13 flat sites near resources like water. But is NASA truly dependent on SpaceX if Starship is just a landing system for the moon? Of course not. While Starship has been contracted to serve as the lunar lander, it will play a far more critical role in the future, ensuring astronauts can reach the lunar surface. Why am I emphasizing this? NASA's current situation in the Artemis program is becoming quite serious. Their flagship moon rocket, the Space Launch System, SLS, is facing a series of delays in draining taxpayer dollars. Additionally, the mobile launch platform isn't being completed on time, adding further strain to the budget. The Orion capsule, designed to carry astronauts into lunar orbit, is also facing numerous technical issues, particularly with its heat shield, which fails to ensure a safe return to Earth. So when can we expect NASA to set foot on the moon? According to plans, Artemis 3, which includes SpaceX's Starship, is scheduled to launch next year. However, given the current issues with critical components, I don't find this timeline realistic. It can be confidently stated that SpaceX's Starship is the only vehicle capable of executing the entire lunar landing process on time, suggesting that both the SLS and Orion may become unnecessary. This is why NASA is maintaining a strong, collaborative relationship with SpaceX and may even be pushing for the expedited development of Starship. Any delays in Starship's test flights could extend this critical government project. SpaceX achieved a significant milestone by successfully catching the super heavy rocket midair during Starship's fifth flight, prompting Elon Musk to comment on X. Today is a huge step toward making life multiplanetary. Accurate landings are incredibly important for future lunar missions. However, despite the progress made, SpaceX still faces significant challenges before Starship is ready for a journey to the moon. This journey, approximately 240,000 miles from Earth, involves a far more complex strategy than just landing accurately. A key element of SpaceX's plan is the concept of refueling Starship in low Earth orbit. This will be accomplished through a fuel fleet, requiring multiple launches and an unprecedented orbital ballet in the history of space travel. Achieving precise landings is a significant advancement in humanity's capabilities today. As former expert Chris Hadfield noted, the Canadian astronaut shared on X that SpaceX's success has fueled excitement about the future of the aerospace industry. He also mentioned that this achievement could alleviate some of NASA's concerns regarding the pace of Starship's development. During a meeting of the National Academy of Engineering's Aeronautics and Space Engineering Committee on October 9th, Lori Glaze, NASA's Deputy Associate Administrator for the Science Mission Directorate, 
expressed NASA's optimism about the upcoming Starship flight, potentially scheduled for mid-October. Glaze emphasized that NASA is closely monitoring SpaceX's activities, believing the company operates differently from the traditional industry. She stated, we are keeping an eye on their progress as they continue to develop. However, NASA's concerns persist due to potential delays in the Artemis III lunar landing mission, which is facing technical challenges, including testing the cryogenic fuel transfer necessary for the human landing system, HLS. Of course, SpaceX needs ample time to refine its systems. Beyond Starship, NASA has high expectations for SpaceX's Falcon line for critical and costly missions. SpaceX remains NASA's top choice. One of this year's standout missions is the $5.2 billion mission to Europa. NASA awarded this launch contract to SpaceX in 2021 using Falcon Heavy, SpaceX's only heavy lift rocket at the time. The launch was successful, marking Falcon Heavy's third flight this year. This Falcon Heavy mission is particularly notable because it requires SpaceX to utilize all three boosters. In most Falcon Heavy flights, two side boosters return to Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, while the central booster is not recovered. Although this mission is not linked to the FAA's commercial launch licensing process, since it's a NASA-directed mission, an incident involving the second stage of the Falcon 9 during the Crew-9 mission was mentioned in the pre-launch press briefing. Julia Shinman, NASA's Director of Science Missions for SpaceX, reported that the Merlin vacuum engine on the rocket's second stage, similar to the one used on Falcon Heavy, burned for an additional 500 milliseconds after the engine shutdown command was issued. This extra half second of thrust caused the rocket's second stage to re-enter. In summary, advancements in landing technology and the collaboration between NASA and SpaceX are paving the way for a new era of space exploration. However, technical challenges must be addressed to ensure that future missions can proceed as planned. The outer atmosphere has gradually spread beyond the second stage landing zone in the South Pacific. According to a spokesperson, on our vehicle, everything operated as expected. We executed a backup shutdown procedure for the Merlin engine, closing the open liquid oxygen valve, which successfully shut down the MBAC engine. NASA is closely monitoring SpaceX's analysis of this incident and conducting its own verifications to ensure further safety. Dunn stated, we have been closely collaborating with SpaceX due to the proximity of the Crew-9 mission and the Europa Clipper. An independent technical review board confirmed that Europa Clipper is functioning without any anomalies, affirming its reliability. Shortly after, SpaceX conducted a Starlink launch with Falcon 9, marking their 100th launch of the year. The launch took place at 2.10 a.m. Eastern Time from Launch Complex 40 at Cape Canaveral Air Force Station. The first stage of Falcon 9, tail number B1080, completed its 11th flight, having previously undertaken two private astronaut missions and two cargo Dragon missions to the ISS. More than eight minutes after liftoff, B1080 successfully landed on SpaceX's drone ship, a shortfall of Gravitas. This marks SpaceX's 81st booster landing and the 353rd successful landing overall. During this flight, 23 Starlink Basium Too Many satellites were launched. This was the first Starlink launch since the upper stage incident during the Crew-9 mission on September 28th. And that wraps up today's video. Thank you for tuning in, and I'll see you in the next one.